Hello and welcome back, dear friends. It's me, Odo. We are back in our campaign of Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Last time we just updated our mythic um, our character to mythic ranks, to the first mythic rank. So, uh, and now we are in uh, the Crusaders camp. Hold. Um, interesting. Okay, there are all our friends standing around somewhere and we will probably talk to a lot of people there's also around uh, I hope we find some um, merchants because we have a lot of stuff in our pockets but let's first start with the storyteller because he can tell us something about our items uh, about the scale of the, uh, uh, about Tyrandalus scales and about Finian, our talking sword, or no, it's not a talking sword; it's a talking crossbow. Tell me what you see about Finian. Hello, Grandpa Elf. <laughs> and the storyteller carefully takes Finian from your hands. Hello, Finian. Closes his eyes and takes a deep breath. His face contorts into a painful grimace. I, I'm coming to again. How long have I been here? They kept me in a cage for three days. I know this because three times the light under the door disappeared for a long time. Then they chained me to the table and the bladesmith. Everyone calls him the bladesmith. He placed the device with a char over me. It feels like I'm being fried. First I tried to break free, but I got tired. Then I screamed. But now I've lost my voice. Though the pain is burning right through me, Storyteller stops his voice, changes, becoming more frightened. I think I lost consciousness again. But when I woke up, the pain was gone. And I wasn't tied to the table anymore. I was standing near it, and someone else was lying on the table, a burnt corpse covered with black crust. The master took out the hand saw and was sawing off his head in a very focused way. Okay. I should have run back then, but I couldn't for some reason. This burnt corpse had a symbol on his belt. Just like I do, an eye and a star. My favorite belt, a good one. That would, where would a stranger get one? It must have been someone from my clan, some distant family member. The storyteller stops. When he speaks again, you hear only a muffled voice whisper. Those crusaders, I, I was glad when I saw them. I thought they'd come to help, but how? How was it that I killed them all? Someone told me to, and I obeyed. I don't understand. I understand nothing now. I I need to catch my breath. I need all this to stop, even just for a minute. minute. I just have to, have to understand what's happening to me. Just need to rest. The storyteller shakes his head, slowly coming to his senses. That is Finian's past awaits him in the future. The dead have no future, but the storyteller smiles. I see an endless ocean on a good day and a boat flying over the waves. I'm so excited, but I don't know whose vision this is. Is this soul existing here and now, or a soul reborn? Thank you for your story. Please take care of this young lad. He is finally in the right hands. Do not worsen his suffering by involving him in dishonorable deeds. Ah, uh, we wouldn't do that. Come on, Grandpa Elf. I can take care of myself. I'm not a kid. I don't know what horrors you were talking about, but don't you worry about it, all right? Look after yourself. Okay. Let's tell me something about Tyrandalef. I'm flying, I can finally spread my wings. I'm gliding over a broad river, 
sunset has turned its surface smooth like a mirror, and I see my reflection. It is as if another silver dragon is rising to meet me from the depths. But what is it? The scales on my chest are black, and the darkness is spreading over my body. I wake up. Clear skies weighs above me, blazing with heat. I am in human form. The red dust of the wound clings to my cracked lips. Someone is carrying me on a stretcher made of shields and spears. I am so weak, I can barely lift my hand to my face. The sight of my own hand terrifies me. This black and the skin glistens like scales melted by fire. Probably ought to cry, but I only feel hatred and nausea. All these people around me, out of sympathy for, for them, did I choose to leave the mountains. I gave up my flights over rivers. I went to the demon's lair. They don't have a scratch on them. But I am infected with foulness. It's not fair. My life is more precious than their pathetic existence. Oh, how I hate them in this moment. Hmm, not so good after all, probably. And then I suddenly feel shame. No, no, these are not my thoughts. The crusaders carrying me are my good friends. I'm glad they did not suffer, but I hate them and myself so much. Pain and hatred pierce me all at once. It's all because of them, all because of them. Someone walking beside me touches me, talking to me. But the only thing I hear is, your mentor, he will come, he will help. And I lose consciousness. Storyteller takes a deep breath, exiting the vision. Such hatred from Trendelev. Wasn't she on our side? Trendelev has come a long way. Her unit was ambushed by demons once. She was infected with foulness. The Terendalev you met in Canabras had gone through many trials and regained her former purity. Yeah, they all say such things. What happened next? Sometimes the past can be as vague as the future. We all know how Terendalev's story ended, but the beginning is hidden from us. Maybe... If you find something else that used to belong to her, we will know more about her struggle. Well, we got two scales. <laughs> Silver dragons are considered one of the most noble of metallic dragons. They commonly blah 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 blah. However, no matter what we learn, remember, a soul, the soul of a true dragon, overcame every obstacle. She was able to purify herself, for dragons are truly powerful, not only in body, but in spirit too. Okay. Mm. I got the page you were looking for from the Great Garrison. Oh, we were looking for something for him? The storyteller carefully takes the page from your hands. His fingers touch the ancient letters gently, examining them lightly, following the lines. I see myself. Young, energetic, able to see how oh gods have I found the key to my path. Finally, I will find out what my own mind has been hiding from me. Okay. Thank you, Slatman Parson. Please follow me to my story. Let us embark on this journey together. Okay. They are leaving. The people of Kionin faced the coming earth fall and admitted that they were incapable of handling his this disaster. The earth fall, this is um, Iron Skies, I think it's, uh, it's a campaign called Iron Skies. It was the last campaign we played. It's uh, not too far from here in the Ingolarian. Proud rulers, artful crafters, brave warriors, wise mages, and skilled healers. All of them hurry to the gate to Sovirian, whatever that is, looking around fearfully. A clean, safe world is waiting for them there. My people decided not to fight for Bolarian. I am ashamed. 
and I'm sorry for them. Their hearts wavered in the face of the catastrophe, but my will is strong. I'm staying. My kinfolk are looking at me angrily. How dare I diminish their decision with my recklessness? My choice makes them our traitors of their own home. One of them, my former mentor, looks at me bitterly. He hands me a neat notebook with a tree bark cover. In case you change your mind, with a heavy sigh, he returns to the line of those departing. Forgive me, brothers and sisters, I watch the gate of the Silverian stone close, separating me from them. It's time for me to go to. I open my master's notebook. These are his notes about traveling between worlds. In case you change your mind, he hopes the burden I shouldered voluntarily will be too much. I will lose heart and find my way to Silverian. That will never happen. My mouth is set, is set stubbornly. I tear my master's, I tear my master's notebook to pieces. I use my forced pride as a shield against my fear of what is to come. Uh, they are afraid to lose what they have. They were rulers, long-lived and powerful. They valued their lives and sunshine too much to enter the fight with the aftermath of Earthfall. The Earthfall is the name given to the cataclysmic event in which a shower of meteorites impacted Galarian in resulted in the destruction of the human empire. Yeah, yeah, that's what I... Your mentor is a mage, then you must be one too. Yes, I'm an archmage, and this title is well deserved. I have acquired delicate mastery and succeeded in many areas of magic, but curiosity has always pushed me toward new knowledge since the first day of my Let's ask after the stone, magnificent crystal, bent into an arch by mighty hand of an ancient divine creator, or great gate to other worlds. It's, it breaths powerful, it dreams of eternity. Why, why are you angry at your fellow elves? I spent many hundreds of years in Kionin. I have always admired the way my kinfolk cared for the forest that was our home, but the rest of the world seemed to mean nothing to them. But I love Galarian, all its places, all the forms it manifests in. I traveled widely, and then came home and told my kinfolk about my travels, but they weren't interested. They only cared about Kionin. Their lack of desire to hear about the wider world makes me sad and angry. A fall happened at night. I was standing at the top of my tower many miles to the north of Kionin, and I see a blaze far in the south. I hear a horrendous rumble. The air is groaning, giving way to a huge rock rushing down on my world. And then a blow. Vibration that penetrates everything. Reaching down into the bowels of Dolarion and up to the walls of the sky. Crunching bones, blood from burst vessels filling my eyes and with darkness. Drowning in timelessness along with countless denizens of Dolarion. Never before have we been so united in our feelings. A big spaceship that falls down, not an asteroid. When I come round, the darkness remains. My first terrible thought, I'm blind. But no, little by little I begin to see the stone wall. I'm alive. But why is it so dark? The answer is quick. The smell of ash everywhere. The great burnt sacrifice killed the air with incinerated particles of what was recently the continent of Arsland. Great clouds of ash covered the sky. 
by cutting us off from the sun. And the more we do, we got to stuff. Day in complete darkness at night. Like a, a nuclear winter. My heart sinks with fear. Treacherous thoughts fill my mind. Why did I stay? Why didn't I run like everyone else when I had the chance? I clench my teeth and stand up to watch her fall. Proudly, like the last archmage of Kionin should. Will my world really perish like this? Will I perish? No, that will never happen. I'm still alive and I can fight a fall and the darkness. Not run from it in a blind panic like my kinfolk and my cowardly team. But what can I do? I will not stop the disaster. I will hardly be able to save empires from the destruction. <laughs> mm, yeah, let's ask for a fall. A disaster of untold proportions. An unborn planet dropped on Galarian by blind fate or someone's evil will. A blow of so strong that the and of Aslan is destroyed within moments, turned to ashes, wiped off the face of Galarian. In this burnt sacrifice, clouds of ash and dust are born, seeding our sun. Without the warmth of our star, the air cools and the soil is barren. Dark creatures crawl out of their lairs so to rule, and the most frightening thing about the sun, all hope dies in the heart. This is the age of darkness. Okay, whatever. What was the tower you mentioned? It's my retreat to the north of Kionin. My home, away from home, my observatory. From its top, I watched the stars, and when they were correctly aligned, the other worlds as well. Here in the northern wastelands, I found the highest mountain and built a tower on top of it. On clear days, I could see the mist over the lake of the mists of mists and whales in the east. That's how high it was. Okay. I don't know. I need to think. My opponent, Earthfall, is much stronger than me. It is merciless. It does not simply destroy itself. It does not simply destroy life. It kills an area, ending the greatness of Golarian civilizations. They will sink into oblivion by forgotten, forgotten as if they never existed. I need to think. Okay, forgive me. I shouldn't have raised my voice. This story was much harder than my, many before it. Most likely. Because I played the main role in it. It's so strange to see myself feel emotions tearing me up inside. Turn so, yeah, out whatever. Please, if you find other pages covered with ancient elven writings on your travels, bring them to me. Okay, so there will be more of his story. To shed some light on my past. I forgot it. Have you decided to join the crusade? Really? I have decided not to. I'm afraid. Oh, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> My path and the path of the crusade lead in the same direction, but, alas, they are not yet one and the same. After the demons were driven away from Canabras, the path into the world wound became open, if only temporarily. I'm planning on using this opportunity to visit. What? It doesn't matter now. I'd hate to bore you with the details of my venture, which may prove useless even to myself. However, 
I'll try to return to the Crusaders and aid them in their confrontation with his new age after I'm done. I hope to meet you again in this world rather than the next. Okay, we'll have to go. This was nearly half an hour now, wasn't it? Well, 20 minutes. Okay. Um, Crusader Wizard, what are you saying? Nothing. I can't talk to Irabeth. This is interesting. He's running around with me. See, every time I move, she moves. Okay, let's look at the map. Where can we go? There is loot. Let's, let's fetch all the loot and look if there are some people. Let's recruits encampment. Eagle Watch encampment. Interesting. Ah, Eagle Watch encampment. Commander's Den. Arbor's Crusaders. And this is. Oh, interesting. We we got one level. How did we get the level? Didn't I see it before? Did we get the level when we These are the Knights of Canabras. All the oh, we got ninety nine experience when we got there. Interesting. Okay, the level up will will be next episode. We will not go somewhere else. Will suck arms. Ooh, stuff. Okay, talk to Will suck arms. Feel like probably he's a uh, merchant. I mean, he looks like a merchant. Early soldier. No, it's a soldier. Really? Look at him. He looks like a merchant. Will suck arms. Yeah, well, he's a so at your service, how may I be of help? Tell me what you have. Okay, let's get rid of all the stuff that we have. And we have really a lot of stuff. This is a... Uh... I mean, we don't fight with... Do we fight with sides? I don't know. What's that? Uh, long sort of right there. Really? Oh, come on. Okay, armor and shielding. Here. Mm -hmm. 
What's this? That's a sonic quiver. Oh, interesting. This will go to <clears throat> my dear Len. Um, do we need all this? Not sure. Okay, uh, there is something I found which is rather interesting. A weird hat. Can we sell this hat? Yes. I mean, um, when you scroll over it, you see decapitated head serving the veering of the neck is unnaturally clean and likely was performed using magic. You have no idea how this, these terrifying remains ended up among your belongings. So that's, that's, I mean, do we keep it? Unfinished letter. This we read already. Sermon extract. This we read already. Biography extract. I don't think that this will do anything. Porcelain plate. And prayer scroll. Yeah. Go away. Let's sell this stuff. Okay, what do, does he have? He has a double jeopardy great club. 3 to 12 damage. Ooh, that's nice. Painful remorse. Okay, this is good for shield bash. We don't do these. Flowing scales. Medium armor scale mail. Oh. Gives it concealment. 10% chance. That's nice. Every chance of not getting getting hit is good. Plus one daggers. Two thousand four hundred, really. He has just masterwork daggers. I mean he's doing great damage with them as well. With these, he would do more damage. <laughs> yeah, but not that much more damage. I mean, it would be magic, so... Yeah, but I hope we will find some magical things. Still, I don't want to buy something here. Yes, yes, three cheers to the commander. Answer my question. Where the mail shoots. Can we talk to him even more? Yeah, probably later on or in between episodes. That's here is Darren and two courtesans, the male and the female one. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, he's talking to me. How oh, there you are, you dashing troublemaker, you. Darren flashes your self-satisfied smile. A short acquaintance is coming to an end. Very soon you will depart on your crusade, where you'll scrape by on horrible rations, struggle vainly to fall asleep, and with snoring soldiers be rudely awoken by the freezing cold and have to look upon the dour faces of self-righteous prigs, before you finally perish in the maw of some demon. I have a journey ahead of me, too. I've just rented a sailboat in the south. I've also hired an excellent chef and a host of other entertainments. 
Well, to each their own, I suppose. Well, no, you can't leave. You are my healer. You know, I'm genuinely sad to see you go. If it sounds like mockery, forgive me. I cannot switch off my venom gland on a whim, you see. But you intrigue me. I only... If only we have spent a little more time together. But of course, daring grimaces, not under these conditions. Let the crusaders and the demons have at each other. With any luck, they'll have this entire sanctimonious spectacle down with all with them. Uh, I'll be blunt, you don't intrigue me. Not in the way you obviously had in mind. Your valuable companion, you could have stayed in my party. Okay. Really? We wouldn't be so blunt, would we? You know, I would like if you'd stay. You intrigue me too. Hmm, we could start to flirt with him. If you feel you don't belong here, go. But I'd like to see you again someday in the future to get to know you better. You can throw a banquet for me to celebrate our victory in Dresden. What do you say? Get lost then. I won't miss you. <laughs> okay, we want him to stay. I mean, he's a really, really great... Um, he's a really great healer. Um... I'm not sure what would be the best way to keep him. Um, mm, I mean, we could flirt with him. I mean, we are a fox. He's an Azimar. What could go wrong? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Obviously everything, but, um, <clears throat> uh, I mean, we don't take the first and the, and the last. We are not unfriendly. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, we are not so self-absorbed about ourselves. Let's, let's flirt with him. Why not? Alas, life is full of disappointments. I must reject your offer. In any case, I intend to wait until the army departs. I do love a good send-off, especially when it is I who is staying and someone else who is heading off to meet a dreary and hopeless end. Sometimes it does one good to ruminate on the unfairness of life. Well then, farewell, Commander, I assume. I shall be your most precious memory on this most disgusting and exhausting road to the pointless slot of battle. Or if not the most precious memory, then at least the most stirring. <laughs> okay, is he gone? Is he still in my... You know, no, he's still there. Like Len. I mean, only words... Nothing, nothing behind it. We probably will will only do our, um, yeah. Let's let's do our leveling up. We are level six now. Oh, no, we are level four, five now. No, level six. Yeah. Clinging scoundrel. Do we take the scoundrel? Yeah, we get the teamwork. We want the teamwork feet for our pig. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do we take? We take persuasion and perception just because they are the most valuable ones. And this because we're the best in that. And we have one point left for, let's say. We take stealth or knowledge world now. 
Can it be trickery? We could take trickery. Hmm. Now we don't need trickery there. At least two characters in our party that can do trickery much better than us. Mm. Yeah, let's take a second level in stealth. Why not? Probably sometimes it's important to be stealthy. Okay, we get a teamwork feat. And let's back spellcaster back to back coordinated defense outflank. Outflank was the good one. Yeah, attacks of opportunity. Whenever you and an ally who also has this feat of flanking the same creature, your flanking bonus on attack rolls increases. It. Shake it off, what's that? When you're adjacent to one or more allies who also have this feat, you gain a plus one bonus on saving throws per such ally. Nah. Mm -hmm. Let's take the outflank. Okay, we have aspect of the bear. You take on an aspect of a bear. You gain plus two enhancement bonus on natural to natural armor. A plus two enhancement bonus on CMB rolls. You also gain the ability to perform a full rod combat maneuver. Not really interesting. I mean, these are quite good. Ooh, summon small elemental. Summon nature's ally too. Summons you to your side a natural giant frog or 1d3 natural mind. Hmm. Let's shine blood red and allows you to see the vital areas and weak points of creatures in the warm glow. This allows you to make sneak attacks with the rogue ability of the same name, dealing an additional 1d6 point of damage. This additional damage increases by 1d6 for every three caster levels. Hmm. Hmm. That sounds quite good. Poison, medium stride, fade into the background, and while you're. Yeah, this just gives me a bonus on stealth. Effortless armor. armor. Hmm. A cat's grace is good, I think. For range people, anyway. Ooh, my pig! <laughs> yeah. My gift. You will be a level 6 animal companion. You will gain perception because you can. And. What's the. Mobility uh, uh, for balance and coordination, including aerial maneuvers, gymnastics, and pumping. And this is. Yeah, okay. Let's give him plus one to mobility. Devotion. On animal companion gains a plus four moral bonus on will save. 
I can see enchantment spells and effects. Interesting. Okay, we have now 17, 16, 17. Are we already huge? I think there is a big, I mean, large. I think uh, at level 6 or level 7 or something like that, we, we the, the animal companion becomes large. Doesn't say here. Hmm. Hmm. It still looks as before. Yeah, I think he's great. Okay, at this point, my dear friend, we will stop in between episodes. I will update all my uh, other characters. I don't do this on the internet because it's just too deep. I took a, uh, three quarters of an hour for the mythical stuff. Uh, it takes too long <laughs> together with you. Okay. Until then, see you. Bye.